locomotion and bodily movement of the ankle, foot and toes. Sense Organs Introduction Living organisms respond to several stimuli such as light, heat, sound, pressure, touch, chemicals, etc. These stimuli are felt by the sense organs receptors. Based on their function and the type of stimulus they perceive, sense organs can be classified into four types. Photoreceptor I Responds to changes in the intensity and wavelength of light. Phonoreceptor Ear Respond to sound. Chemoreceptors Taste buds on the tongue and olfactory receptors in the nasal chamber respond to chemicals. Tactile receptors Touch Respond to pressure, pain, heat, cold, etc. The ear Phonoreceptor The ears are organs of hearing and balance. They have three parts, namely the external ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The external ear, the fleshy part outside the head, is called the pinna. It is followed by the external auditory meters, auditory canal. This passage is lined with hair and seduminous glands. These glands produce sedumen, ear wax. The hair and the wax protect the eardrum from foreign objects. The eardrum is an oval membrane seen at the terminal end of the auditory canal. The middle ear is an air-filled cavity which consists of three auditory ossicles, namely the malleus, the incus and stapes. The malleus is hammer-shaped and is seen to the eardrum. The incus is anvil-shaped and connected to the malleus by a hinge joint. The stapes is stirrup-shaped and connected to the incus on one side, while the other side lies against the oval window of the inner ear. The ear ossicles are amplifiers of sound waves. There is a narrow tube that arises from the lower surface of the middle ear and is in contact with the pharynx. This tube is known as the Eustachian tube. It serves to equalize the pressure of air on the, both the sides of the tympanum. The inner ear. It lies in the bony labyrinth of the skull. The inner ear consists of a membranous labyrinth consisting of two sac-like organs called utriculus and sacculus. Associated with the utriculus are three semicircular canals. The end of these canals are swollen to form the ampullae. Associated with the sacculus is a spirally coiled tube called cochlea. Internally, two membranes divide the cochlea into three canals. The two membranes are the Reissner's membrane and the basilar membrane. The three canals are scala vestibuli, scala media, and scala tympani. S. vestibuli and S. tympani are interconnected by an opening called the helicotrema. The two canals are filled with perilymph. The scala media is filled with endolymph. The actual organ of hearing, called the organ of corti, is attached to the thin membrane of the cochlear canal, namely the basilar membrane. The sensory hair of these cells are in contact with the overhanging tectorial membrane. The nerve fibers from these cells join to form the auditory nerve. Mode of hearing. Sound waves are passed on from the tympanum to the middle ear and then to the inner ear. These sound waves travel through perilymph of the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani the resulting in wave-like movement of the basilar membrane. The movement of the basilar membrane is responsible for the stimulation of the hair cells. 
the organ of corti converts these stimuli into electrical impulses which pass along the auditory nerve to the auditory center in the brain. Interpretation of the brain results in hearing. We hear sounds of different pitch because for each frequency there is a particular part of the basilar membrane that is more sensitive. Chemoreceptor Taste buds The taste receptors are called taste buds. Taste buds consist of slender receptors arranged in barrel-shaped clusters on the surface of the tongue. Taste buds open into the buccal cavity by a pore. The receptor cells have fine hair-like projections extending into the pore. The other end of the receptor cells have sensory neurons and join to form the nerve. There are four primary tastes. They are sweet, sour, salty and bitter. The receptors for sweetness and saltishness are located at the tip, sourness at the side and bitterness at the back. Reproductive system The reproductive system in human beings, the process, sexual reproduction, is carried out by the male and female reproductive organs. Male reproductive system This consists of a pair of testes, seminal tracts and related glands. Testes These are a pair of ovoid organs lying one in each scrotal sac. The back of skin having two separate compartments, one for each testis. The testis is concerned with the formation of the male gametes, the spermatozoa of a large number of seminiferous tubules. The interstitial cells, Leydig cells, lie between the seminiferous tubules and secrete the hormone testosterone. Seminal tract and related glands. Epididymis. The seminiferous tubules unite to form a long tubular and highly tear called epididymis. It is the main storehouse of sperms which become motile here. Vas deferens. The epididymis from the testes differentiates into a muscular tube called the vas deferens. It ascends through the inguinal canal into the pelvis opening into the urethra. Penis. It is composed of spongy erectile tissues through which the urethra opens to the exterior. Semical vesicles. A pair of tubular glands situated behind the neck of the urinary bladder opening into the vas deferens of that side. Prostate gland. A pair of glands at the base of the urinary bladder reproductive system. This consists of a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tube, uterus and vagina. Female reproductive system Consists of a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tube, uterus and vagina. Ovaries These are a pair of oval bodies attached to the dorsal body wall in the abdominal cavity by a fold of peritoneum. The ova or female gamete develop inside. Fallopian tube Close to each ovary is a funnel-shaped structure called the fallopian tube. The fallopian funnel leads to a narrow tube called the fallopian tube. The two fallopian tubes open behind into the uterus. Uterus It's a hollow, thick-walled muscular organ situated in the pelvic cavity between the urinary bladder and the rectum. The inner mucous membrane is known as endometrium. The main function of the uterus is to prepare the endometrium to receive the fertilized ovum where it develops and is nourished to full term. The uterus narrows behind to form the cervix. Vagina It is muscular tube 
which connects the cervix with the external genitalia. The vagina serves to receive the sperms and also as a birth canal.